Uh, this is uh, as we enter into our, our uh, national road, um, road safety phase. It's phase two of our operation. It's an operation in which police services all around Australia and New Zealand join in. It's called Operation Crossroads. And of course uh, what we intend to focus on this year uh, during that operation, in fact all four phases of our operation across the Christmas period, beginning 7 December uh, through to uh, when school returns on the 23rd, 24th uh, of January, uh, is of course our fatal four uh, causes of road crashes and deaths on our roads. And that of course is uh, drink driving, driving whilst tired, driving whilst unrestrained and of course speeding. Um, the additional uh, uh, issue or factor that we'll be looking at this year will of course be dangerous operation of motor vehicles, otherwise known as dangerous driving, and that will be uh, a, a tantamount to our, to our enforcement campaign this year. So there's really five things that we're looking at. Uh, what we're hoping to do is try to limit the death and injury on our roads. Uh, Christmas, New Year period is a time of celebration, a time for families, but I can tell you that uh, law enforcement officers, uh, our emergency service officers, and of course our doctors and nurses uh, hold their collective breath at this time of year, hoping that the, uh, the death and injury on our road will be as, as low as possible. Um, I'm ready to take any questions you might have. Is the message getting through? We would like to think that the road safety message is getting through, but it's one of the things that we need to continually work at. Um, we have to continue to reinforce the fatal four, uh, the not drinking driving, not driving whilst tired, not speeding, and ensuring that seatbelts are worn at all times. It's a message that we hope is getting through, and we particularly like to think that at this time of year, it's a time of year that is supposed to be a time of celebration, a time of family and a time of friends. And I think when we get into our motor cars, we need to remember that. If we could treat people on the roads as though they were part of our family or part of our friends circle, uh, I think that we would have a, a much more considerate, a much more thoughtful um, uh, motoring public. Uh, and I think if we did that, we would see uh, considerable decreases uh, in, our, in, our, in our road toll, both our, our fatalities and our injury accidents. Andrew, the campaign seems to be moving away from road carnage and bloody hits to one of um, trying to get people just to be more courteous. Is that proven to be more effective or what, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, one of the things that we notice and we recognise is that, uh, is that uh, incivility on the roads and frustration and, uh, and uh, lack of patience on the roads certainly leads to people making poor decisions. Um, and of course those poor decisions can have quite fatal consequences and quite serious consequences. So we are very keen to ensure that people try to be as courteous as they can with each other I think another important aspect of this is that uh, many of the people using our road networks over the, the Christmas holiday period are not local people. We have a lot of people who come from interstate and in fact from overseas as well as other parts of the state of Queensland. And so there's a lot of people out there driving around quite unfamiliar with our roads. So it is really important that we extend people the courtesy. They may not be from here, they may not be used to driving on the roads each day. Um, so that little bit of extra courtesy will go a very long way. Can, can you put that, uh, well, call it road rage, down to anything in particular? I mean, is it traffic congestion? Is it poor roads? Is, it, is there any reason for it? it it's, uh, it's difficult to put your finger on it. It is definitely frustration, um, and I'm sure that there are a number of factors that would lead to that. Congestion would be one. Um, there's also a desire that people get from point A to point B quickly, particularly at this time of year. People are really trying to get to friends and family, etc. And that can be a source of frustration if that progress is impeded in any way. But what we really need to do is encourage people just to take your time and slow down. An extra five minutes isn't going to hurt. It's not going to hurt anybody. But uh, trying to cut an extra five minutes off your trip might very well hurt somebody. It might in fact lead to a fatality. And how is phase two different to phase one? Are there more officers or...? Well, the difference uh, is that we add an extra uh, criteria to our road safety campaign, which is uh, the dangerous operation of motor vehicles, the dangerous driving. So we have strategies in place to deal with that specific uh, type of threat to our road safety. But I think the important part with phase two is the fact that this is a united operation and it includes police jurisdictions from all the other states uh, and across the Tasman. Um, so we, we are, uh, this really is I guess a statement from law enforcement that we will focus very, st very steadily, very strongly on road safety over this particular period. Phase two, as you know, covers the actual Christmas and New Year days, um, so they are the, the days that we really focus on. Um, 
It's a terrible time to lose a family member or a friend on the road at any time. But over Christmas and New Year, a time that is supposed to be one of celebration and getting together with family, it must be utterly traumatic uh, for family members and friends. We know the road toll is 19 more compared to this time last year. Off the top of your head, do you know how many people died between, like, as in, in phase two last year? In phase two last year, there were five fatalities on our roads. Five people were killed. Um, uh, we are hoping that we can reduce that. I've got to stress that that actually was a, a, a good year in terms of numbers. It's a tragic year for anybody that's killed, but good years in terms of numbers. Can I tell you, though, that we are optimistic, but certainly not complacent, about the fact that in phase one of our operation, which began on the 23rd of, uh, I beg your pardon, which began on the 8th of this month, uh, we, we, had, uh, we had less deaths on the road than we did for the same period last year. Last year for phase one of our operation there were 16 deaths on our roads. This year there was only 10. Now I say only 10 and as you know the statistics are one thing but the trauma and the suffering from people involved in those traffic accidents of course is, is quite considerable. So there is some optimism but we all need to ensure that we don't become complacent. We need to focus on our driving. We need to ensure that we are concentrating on what we're doing and of course above all being courteous and applying the road rules. So when's phase two officially start? Is it like four o'clock this afternoon until when? Or? Well it actually starts at, uh, it started at one minute past midnight this morning and, uh, and it will run through until the, till the, uh, till the 8th of January. Is that the national campaign? Is that yes. the national? Yeah. What will phase two actually mean for drivers on the road? I think drivers on the road will see an increased police presence uh, we are mobilising all the resources that we have available to us to ensure that we have a strong police presence. Um, there, it, this is a very strong enforcement phase of the operation. This is a time when uh, we will be focusing on those motorists who are, um, who are not complying with the road rules. And of course, uh, I think the difference that people will see will be the volume of police, the actual frequency with which police cars pass them and they see police officers attending to uh, traffic enforcement duties. Is that how you're hoping to tackle the issue of um, dangerous driving, just through a, a high police presence? Because isn't that sort of, I mean, it's not like it's meant to be much of a justification in the act. Yes. No, that's right. Dangerous operation of a motor vehicle is the, is the sort of thing that requires um, some fairly uh, skillful police tactics. Um, obviously, for obvious reasons, I can't go into precisely what those tactics will be but it's the type of operation that requires police to be on scene, to be observing, either, uh, either physically or electronically, and to, um, to intercept vehicles that are participating in dangerous driving behaviour. So can we expect a lot more unmarked police cars of different varieties than what we normally see on the roads, like different model cars? Yeah, we, have a, we have a range of, uh, of different models, different makes, uh, both covert and overt. Uh, and all the resources that we have available to us will be mobilised over this uh, this coming Christmas New Year period. When you say electronically, is that because you're on YouTube and places like that for people who upload their antics? Yeah, well, there are a range of means by which we are able to to track and vector in on uh, on people who have a propensity to drive dangerously, and also to vector in on acts of dangerous driving. So, uh, whilst on, I wouldn't go into the details, uh, uh, we can say that all the resources that we have available to us will be, will be used. Is there, more, uh, is there going to be higher penalties or demerit points um, for those caught dangerously driving? Well, dangerous driving is a different category of offence. It's, it's, it's not a, an offence for which a person gets a, gets a ticket or points. Uh, it's a, an offence for which people have to appear before the court and uh, that can involve the loss of licence, a substantial period of uh, a st substantial fine or a substantial period of imprisonment. So it works a little differently, uh, but it is viewed very seriously by the courts and certainly very seriously by the police. Do you have a, a view that you can express on double demerit points at this time of year? Well, you may be aware that we actually do have double demerit points in Queensland already. Um, the double demerit points work in terms of speeding, um, failing to wear a motorcycle helmet and other offences uh, where the offender is, is intercepted twice within a 12-month period for that offence. So two interceptions of those types of offences lead to double demerit points the next time round. So it is, it is something that we, we already have in Queensland.
Not for, for an not for an individual incident like in New South Wales. No. Any idea of any fixed speed cameras? Um, sorry, the point to point cameras were turned on this week. Any idea how many people have been caught speeding through there? Yes, uh, on the first day. Now, uh, there, there is a delay. Uh, it's a normal processing delay between when the detection occurs and when the information about the detection is transmitted back to a central point uh, here in Brisbane and then the information is downloaded. So there's usually a delay. I can tell you that on the first day of operation, uh, which was on, on Wednesday from midnight on, uh, there were 16 um, people detected uh, in what we refer to as point-to-point -point mode, and that is the distance between the two, the two cameras and the time it takes to get there. But the cameras also work in uh, point-in-time mode, which means it works like any other type of traffic camera, so it can record speed as the motorist passes that camera spot. And uh, on the first day of operation, four motorists were detected in that way. So all up 20 for that site. And the next day was very similar numbers. It works out to, to about uh, 0.48 uh, per thousand cars that go past. So I think that's a very good thing. Um, when we uh, conducted the trial out there and had the cameras in operation, the rate of offending or the rate of detections was, was much higher than that. But as we've seen with all other camera systems that we have so far installed, the rate of detection falls significantly over time as people become aware of the fact that they exist. Um, and, uh, and our point-to-point -point camera, I think, is no exception. People are aware of that. The advantage, of course, with point-to-point -point camera uh, is that it, it, it focuses the attention of the driver over a much greater period of time, in this case 14.6 kilometres in the Glasshouse Mountain site. So it, it encourages motorists to focus on their speed over a long period of time, not simply at, at point in time when they pass a camera that, that may operate. Sorry, lastly, the Gold, there was a Gold Coast operation last night with drug and alcohol detection units. Have you yeah, I don't have any data about that yet.